before we start to implement the roulette wheel selection, as we discussed earlier, roulette wheel selection is a way to select several items with predefined selection probabilities. And if we want to implement this, we're going to simulate this as a physical form of dividing a circle into several areas and the area or the perimeter of circle is divided according to the selection probabilities of the items. Actually, it's proportional to the selection probability and we have an indicator and we return this circle and when the circle stops, the indicator tells us which item is the winner of this selection process. Okay, let's have a sample. Let's have an example here. We have first item and its selection probability is 10%, for example, and we have second item and its selection probability is 20%, and the third one is 30%, and the final one is 40%. And you know that the sum of all choices is 100%. And let's divide the circle into parts with 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40% of the area or perimeter of the circle, okay? We can use this and, for example, this is the first area with 10% of chance to be selected, and this is the second area with 20%, and this is the third area which has 30%, selection chance and this is the final area which has 40% selection probability and we have an indicator and for example let's assume that it's here we're going to rotate this and whenever it stops the indicator it tells us about the winner however I'm going to implement this in MATLAB and it's not a good idea to remain in the circular form it's hard to implement actually. It can be simpler and I'm going to convert the perimeter of this circle into a line. So I'm going to cut the perimeter of the circle from here and I'm going to convert this into a line. So I have a line and for example I have these cutting points. This is 10% approximately and this is 20% 30% and 40% and this is our first choice second third and final choice and if I add up the values of these percentages we have 0 here and this is 10% or 0 0.1 and this is 0 0.3 I added 10% and 20% to reach 30% and we have 0 0.6 here and 1 here as a whole and now the rotating of circle is equivalent to selecting a random number from 0 to 1 and for example assume that we created a random number using this function and it returned 0 0.36 and you know that it is here. So the winner is 3. And if the output of rand function is, for example, 0 0.22, then it will be here. Let's have another option. 0 0.22, then it will be here. And the winner will be 2. And for example, if the output is 0 0.95, then it will be here, for example, and the winner will be 4. So we converted the problem of rotating a circle into this simpler problem, and we just need to determine that the randomly generated number with uniform distribution in the range of 0 to 1 lies in which range? And the first, second, third, or fourth range. And that's it. If the number is from 0 up to 0 0.1, then this range is selected. This is the winner. And if the number is from 0 0.1 up to 0 0.3, then this will be the winner and so on. 
and you can for example for 0.1 you can give the right to use this boundary to the previous range just because it has zero probability any number in this range any singleton in this range has zero probability so it does not make any difference that you select 0.1 as one or two we're going to have this in the left hand side range so we must create a random number in the range of 0 up to 5 1 and then we're going to determine which range contains that number and i'm going to simplify this even more let's assume that we have these probabilities the same probabilities we had we have 0 0.1 i'm going to calculate the cumulative versions of this so this is the 0 0.1 c2 equals to the sum of all probabilities about that so it's equal to 0 0.3 and c3 will be equal to 0 0.6 and c4 will be equal to 1 and for example if your random number is 0 0.32 then we know that the winner will be this and if you compare this number to these cumulative probabilities you know that this is larger than these numbers which is greater than these numbers but it's a smaller than these numbers and we select the first one the first winner so to make the process even simpler we select a random number and we find the first cumulative value which is greater than the random number and that's it for example if you select the random number to be 0 0.95 then it will be less than this and so the c4 is the winner the fourth area will be winner and it's greater than all of these numbers so we must select the first one which is greater than the random number generated uniformly in the range from 0 to 1 okay i'm going to raise this number and we know that this is the output of rand function let's simulate this simple example in matlab and after that i will implement the relative selection based on the simple example we have okay for example let's define p the vector of probabilities as this and we know that the sum of these probabilities is one to calculate the cumulative sum of these we can use com sum to calculate the cumulative sum of this array and we'll get this and these numbers 0 0.1 0 0.3 0 0.6 and 1 are exactly these numbers and let's create a random number here and you see that this is the 0 0.4 and assuming this this area the first item will not be the winner the second will not be the winner but the third is the winner and we must return three as the output of this procedure and for example let's check if this answer is less than or equal to c or not and it will return it's a logical expression and it will return an array of logical values and we see that the condition these two items three and four and we must return the first one as the winner so i'm going to use the function find where 0 0.4 is less than or equal to c and that will return three and four but we must return exactly one and i'm going to return one and the first one and that will return three only and now i'm going to replace 0 0.4 with rand and that's it every time you call this function you will get a number one two three or four and the probability of having one as output is 0 0.1 tenths and the probability of having two as the output equals to 0 0.2 and three equals to 0 0.3 Three and the fourth item is 0 0.4. So 
that's the key to implement relative field selection okay let's create an empty file and i'm going to create a function which returns a an index i and the function name is roulette wheel selection and also we accept a list of probabilities and finally we must calculate the cumulative sum of this let's calculate this come sum of p and we must create a random number here rand and i will be the output of function find where r is less than or equal to c and first one element and from the first of the sequence we're going to find the first index where this condition is true and this condition is that a random number is less than or equal to cumulative sum of these probabilities however if p has not a sum of one then we must normalize this for example if instead of defining p as this we define in this format then we must normalize p using this rule p divided by sum of p and then continue the calculations or we can just do this we can calculate the cum sum of p and we get this and to generate a random number we must consider the range 0 up to 10 as the random number we're going to compare to com sum so the key to this either of these options can be used here we can normalize p using this rule p divided by sum of p and it can be dangerous because if sum of p is zero then we may get an error and this is dangerous but the other solution is that we multiply this random number by sum of p and we no longer need this uh, line of normalization so we create a random number uniformly distributed from zero to sum of all elements of p and then we compute the com sum of p and then we find the first index where this condition is true this condition holds so that's the relative field selection let's save this okay let's test the relative field selection we have relative field selection on for example this vector of probabilities and this will return one two three or four and we know that the probability of three and four is more than the others we rarely get one here we have one and we can test this to see what's the output and we can now use relative field selection here instead of selecting random parents so i'm going to ignore this i'm going to delete this one and as q1 i'm going to use relative field selection and which probability props we will define this very soon and also the q2 is also the output of roulette wheel selection we run roulette wheel selection twice for a single crossover because we need two parents here but what's props we must define the selection probabilities according to the performance and objective value of solutions and probability of selection for better individuals must be higher and to do so we have many options but i'm going to talk about a particular one and i'm going to create a mapping which maps the value of objective function in any range to the positive real numbers and it can be used without any risk to create the probability distribution over the population over the individuals and it guarantees that better solutions have more chance to be selected as parents to calculate the probabilities of selection for individuals there are several options and i'm going to use a particular one known as boltzmann rule is very similar to boltzmann distribution 
the general condition for these probabilities is this. For example, if we have cost function ci, cost value c1 for the first member, c2 and finally cn, then we're going to calculate the selection probability for this as pi1, pi2, up to pi n. And we know that the summation of these must be equal to 1. They must add up to 1. And if ci is less than or equal to cj, then pi i must be greater than or equal to pi j. And vice versa, we have this as two directional induction. And we can find many functions that have this property. But for this implementation, I'm going to use this definition. Pi i is defined proportional to e to the power of minus beta c i. And to resolve this proportion, we're going to normalize the values of this to hold this condition. But this guarantees the second condition. And if c i increases, then pi i will decrease. And beta here plays a critical role, and it's known as the selection pressure. And we have pi i proportional to e to the power of minus beta c i. And for example, if beta equals to zero, then all pi i's will be one divided by n. So all of selection probabilities will be equal. And this is the zero selection pressure. There is no selection pressure here. And if beta goes to infinity, then if we have just one individual that's the best among population members, then pi i will be 1 for that particular member and 0 for others. And if we have more than one best members in the population which share the same value of cost, then this one will be divided among them. But for the case we have just one member, then we have this. And for some values in between 0 and infinity, we may have a different scenario which makes available for any individual to be selected as parent, but the better individuals have more chance to be selected as parents. So the optimal value for beta is something between here and for example we can define beta in proportion to 1 divided by c bar and what's c bar? It's the average value of costs defined as this. We calculate the average of this and we define beta similar to this. Or simply we can replace this definition with this. Pi i is proportional to e to the power of minus beta c i divided by summation of c i's divided by n and that's the average. This normalizes the cost values and it ensures that the magnitude of c will not affect the selection probabilities. And it, it is somehow normalizes the probabilities and these values. And beta this time can control the selection pressure efficiently. So we're going to use this formula to calculate the selection probabilities in MATLAB. And let's add the code here. I'm going to add the selection probabilities here. Selection probabilities and I'm going to define C as pop dot cost and I'm going to define C bar as average C or C average as mean of the C values and I'm going to normalize the C as this C equals to C divided by average C and in case we have a zero value for average cost this will result in bad conditions and maybe we get some errors. We'll see this. And we must, for example, in those states, we must divide by other value or don't divide at all. And let's calculate the props, the probabilities here. Exponent of minus beta times C. And this C is 
the normalized version of cost values here. And what's beta? We must define the beta value here. For example, beta equals to params dot beta. We must add this to our app. And params dot beta equals to one for now. And that's it. We defined selection probabilities, and we're going to run the program to see what's the result. App one. Okay, we get an error. The error tells that not enough input arguments and that points to single point crossover and let's see what's this actually the cost vector is something like this and the average c is mean of c and when c is divided by the average c then we get nans and if we calculate the props as e to the power of minus c then we again get nan and if we call roulette wheel selection on this props we'll get again an empty matrix because these are nans and this is not good so if average c is zero then simply don't divide c by this so i'm going to put a condition here if average c is not equal to zero then divide and if it is zero then don't divide it's simple and let's run this program we have this and that's it we we have the result here and you see after the 40th generation the algorithm found the best solution of the problem Okay, that's it. We implemented the roulette wheel selection here. And let's review the code. We have a script which defines the problem and encapsulates its data into a structure named problem. We define GA parameters. Two of these parameters are common among metaheuristics. And we have three other parameters selection pressure, the proportion of crossover, and it tells us that how many children, how many of his springs will be created at each generation. And this is the mutation rate. And then we run GA using this, passing the information of problem and parameters. And then we enter this function. And this function extracts information from problem, extracts the parameters from params. It creates an empty individual, a template for our members of population and we initialize the best soul ever found with infinity record just to make sure that with any comparison in the future the best soul will be the loser of competition because there is no records before we run the algorithm and then we create an initial population creating random solutions and evaluating them and comparing them to best solution ever found and we create an array of max it empty slots to store the best cost at the end of any iteration and then we enter the main loop calculating the selection probabilities because of roulette wheel selection is the first thing we're going to do and we initialize the population for children for office springs we perform crossover here by selecting parents using roulette wheel selection and calling my crossover which is a randomized combination of three crossover operations we defined and then we convert the popsy the population of children of springs into a single column matrix and then we perform mutation on all members of that population and we evaluate the mutants and then we compare them to best soul and then we sort population but sort the merged population of the original population and population of office springs and then we select the top members removing the extra individuals from end of the population and then we store the best cost at the end of this iteration and here we show the iteration information and finally we return final population best soul and best cost records as output variable and here we have output variable and we're ready to add some plots okay let's create a figure here let's add some empty lines to 
have this in the middle of the screen. I'm going to plot the out dot best cost and I'm going to X label the label of the horizontal axis. We have the iterations and the Y label best cost and let's have grid on and that's it that will work fine i'm going to run this program to see what's the result app1 and we have this if you want you can set the line width of this plot to two for example using this parameters and you have this plot it starts with a an error value of 37 and it optimizes the cost function and here at the 43rd iteration we found the solution of the problem and that's how GA works and how GA finds the solution of the optimization problem known as min1 okay this script this function contains a simple yet powerful implementation of genetic algorithm but this version is the binary genetic algorithm and we will implement another version of the genetic algorithm that deals with real valued numbers real valued decision variables so we're not finished we're not done we're going to improve this code to deal with real valued optimization problems